Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. I'm going to make a video about Sunfoil Aerodynamics comparing the Mark 8, which at first glance doesn't appear to be aerodynamic at all, and the Mark 3, which is a faceted aerofoil with all the bells and whistles. It's fully enclosed, it's insulated, it's ventilated. It sucks cool air from the shady patch underneath with 16 forward facing ram scoops which at highway speed blow compressed air 20% faster than the car is travelling slipstream wise and 20% compressed onto the underside of the trailing edge which by coander effect draws air over the outside of the trailing edge and pulls it over that 45 degree chine and prevents it from stalling. And thus transforms the solar panel into a very high tech complicated aerofoil with boundary layer airflow control in the moonlight at highway speed. And on a hot sunny day it dumps all of the waste heat from under the panel into the air flowing through the plenum chamber, feeding the blast tubes. So technically, it's a solar thermal ramjet. One of two that were about as advanced as that that I've actually built and installed on vehicles and tested and they ran around the roads for years. But one of these takes 30 days of sheet metal work and pop rivetry, if you know what you're doing. Now, I suppose if this was a really well-mannered movie, I would remove the bird dung from the top of the solar panel, but seeing as part of the point that I want to make is that I have not cleaned the vehicle. There's dust resulting from very small amounts of rain falling through dirty, hazy air on the top of the panel. Now we have some bird shit. But look at this, we have a flat face that's absolutely perpendicular to the airflow and the forward mounting brackets have been contrived to function as airflow separation fences. So the air absolutely has to go under or over. And it does that, but the air that actually impacts the aluminium perpendicular surface, it has to make a 90 degree change in direction and it sort of piles up there. You get a half cylinder of compressed air effectively and that means that air following along behind it runs into the compressed air half cylinder and it slides under or it slides over because there's an invisible aerodynamic pneumatic barometric you might say pressure leading edge so the front end is literally Streamlined to the point that whereas this 45 degree edge still carries desiccated impact marks from the mosquitoes and midges and sandflies and dragonflies and blowflies that it's run into at 100 kilometres an hour on the highway back in the days when this was registered. But the leading edge of the Mark 8 Sunfoil, I haven't cleaned it and it's absolutely pristine. There's not a single sandfly or bug or mosquito gut or dragonfly intestine on it. And it's been there for about a year. And I haven't washed the car. This car gets washed when it rains. The wing mirrors are covered in dead bugs, both of them. The windscreen has lots of dead bugs on it, as well as bandage patches on the bullseye stone hits. The steel plate to attach a magnetic P plate covered with dead grasshoppers. The bull bar covered with dead mosquitoes and midges and sandflies, blowflies, dragonflies, headlights, lots of them. You can track the airflow around the bull bar by tracking the direction of the splat mark. That's why I call the road system 
the bitumen wind tunnel. So all these smooth curved surfaces, they're all getting hit. Down here, there's not enough air piling up in front of that because the air can't get past the number plate. Not much in the way of bug splatter marks on the top of the plastic bumper bar. Lots of them on the front of the number plate and the front of the plastic bumper bar. But the invisible aerodynamics of the barometric high pressure pneumatic leading edge keeps the front end streamlined, at least as streamlined as a half cylindrical uh, round on the leading edge size can get. Moving right along, the air over the top smooths down fairly rapidly. Underneath the panel, there are four and a half strakes moulded into the roof which have the effect, once again, of smoothing out the airflow, making it go straight back. And when it gets to the back, on the underside, when it would otherwise come along here and then effectively be trapped by the flange along the bottom, that flange scoops up the high-speed air and forms it into another little pocket of High, uh, high, high pressure air which forms a reservoir in front of these quarter inch holes on half inch centers and they blow their slightly high speed slightly high pressure air into the exact center of what would otherwise be an extremely turbulent little burble coming off here however the pressure injection of 30 little streams of relative high speed, relative high pressure air into the center of that otherwise turbulent burble effectively gives this an invisible, scalloped, pneumatic, barometric trailing edge formed by air pressure. And uh, as you can see, the fact that this is not creating extra turbulence means there's not a big low pressure zone along here, which is why there's not a whole lot of dust building up on here in the way that it is building up on the tailgate. Effectively, as clunky as this looks, I'm claiming that it's as near to being aerodynamically drag neutral as damn is to being a swear word. Either I got the aerodynamics reasonably correct, or like Donald Shimoda in Richard Bach's book, Illusions, I've somehow developed the ability to magically fly through the air without crushing any bugs on me propeller's leading edge, or in my case, without crushing any bugs on me sunfoil's leading edge. And I think it's aerodynamics rather than late 1970s spiritual mysticism and woo factor. Wobbles on a lot to YouTube. Sunfoil aerodynamics, Mark 3 versus Mark 8. Ciao.